Welcome back to Spectacle Island for episode 27 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Here we are again, and the usual Mr. CLP style. I said I was going to do some work off camera, and I have. This is field five. And as you can see, top right, the money has gone down. That's because I bought field six. But it doesn't look how you might think it was going to look. That's because I grabbed the devourer, I came out, and I went to work. Properly went to work. Now, the field cost me 192 grand, and this is where hopefully things are going to work out very nicely. Um, before I go into that bit though, all of the manure that I put into the biogas plant has processed through. I've got 90,793 litres of digestate to sell. The digestate price was tanking massively, so I'm going to keep hold of it. Yeah, 983. I mean, that's still a fantastic price for digestate, don't get me wrong. But when I've had it up over a thousand, which is where I want it to be. Um, we can do all right out of that. So that's off selling that extra manure we had. I say extra manure when I was being an entrepreneur. Uh, but in clearing the trees off here using the devourer, obviously I've got a load more wood chips again. If we scroll across and we get to our wood chips, I have got. Hang on. Oh, I'll pan it for a minute then. That can't be right. Oh, that one there. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. Oh, that's chaff, I think. Or is that gravel? Oh, doesn't matter. No, that's salt mix ration I'm looking at. Well, the wood chips. Sorry. Um, I've got 380,000 litres sitting in the silo at the yard, the one that holds 400,000 litres. But I've also got, over at the sawmill, waiting to be unloaded, a full trailer of 250,000 litres. We got 620,000 litres of wood chips off this field when we cleared the trees. So, what did we do to the field? It has been cultivated, well it's been ploughed. It needed liming too, that's been done. And it's got two fertilising states, apart from that tiny little bit up in the corner there. So the field has been completely prepped and is ready to go. So I thought I would show you that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back. We are folded up, we are good to go. And I'm going to see you in a minute over at the sawmill to sell the first of our wood chips. Now what I'm hoping, the price isn't, it's not a great demand or anything like that, but the price is okay, it's 300 and something. With 620,000 litres to sell, I'm hoping that I make 192 grand. At least 192 grand. If I do, I've covered the cost of buying field six. It's taken me some time, but it doesn't matter. So in essence, apart from the time put in, and obviously leasing the devourer and the transport, the field would have technically been free, kind of. So that's all very wonderful. Uh, fields one to five are growing, as you can see, with our canola in. I've got to decide what I'm going to put in field six now. I didn't think that far ahead. I just thought, let's buy another big field. Let's clear the trees. Let's do some wood chipping. I'll you know, do a whole load off screen. I didn't really think too much more about it after that. As you do, so as we're travelling back, FarmCon. Wow, some revelations. Quite a lot, actually. I'm trying to work out in what format to put them in. Anything that has been blogged um, by Giants has been put onto the Farming Simulator website. I have done screenshots from the various video clips from FarmCon. I've done screenshots they've blogged, and I've done a few videos. If you haven't watched them, um, they should be under FS22 Information Sharing under that playlist. Uh, so there's a whole load more information about uh, the crops and oh, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, Elm Creek and lovely. But obviously the build mode. They haven't put the video out about the build mode. But there is so much. I have. I, as I was watching all these things, I had a notepad and I was making notes as I was watching all different presentations. And obviously I've gone back in afterwards while they after they posted them on YouTube, 
and watched a few of them again because there was a couple of bits I wasn't sure about, a couple of bits I missed and a couple of bits, say I missed in that when they were speaking things were said quite quickly and I went back and a couple of times and I couldn't quite make out what was said so I don't want to get things wrong but I'm trying to work out now all the rest of the information, everything that I've kind of pieced together how to put it out, you know I, I want to share the information, there'll be a lot of people I can't, as I've always done when I make my videos I cannot make the assumption that everyone is fanatical I cannot make the assumption that, for example Silver News, Clutch, DJ, FS Club all those guys that do their news, Farmers Simulator News they'll spend hours scouring through everything to find all the information they can to put it across to the viewers, the subscribers, the, you know, the people that are playing the game. Your average casual gamer would be interested by that information but isn't necessarily going to go hunting for it. Now, the blogs and stuff are available and the FarmCon streams were there to watch. But they were streaming between 7pm and, well, half past 8 and 9pm. Each day was a slightly different time. You now, if you're working or you were busy or you were, you know, whatever it is you were doing, you might have missed all of that. And you might think, well, if I get a chance, I'll go on and I'll have a look at the videos um, that Giants have put onto the website. But you might not. And there might be just a ton of people out there that just think, you know what, I, it's that um, it's passive learning rather than active learning. I don't mind the learning coming to me. I'll click on a video link, and if it's all compiled into one place, I'll watch it. But I'm not going to go out hunting for all the little bits of information to compile them myself. So it's that, you know, you've got to allow for everyone. Not everyone's going to know everything. I certainly don't know everything. There's a whole load of stuff. I spoke to Lars Lysitan yesterday. Um, had a bit of a chat with him. And um, they're playing their cards very close to chest. I, I was trying to ask questions that might give us some more information. But he would not would not give up anything. Apart from... And it's not, it's not information that... There's still something big they haven't unveiled yet. Probably more than one thing. Because I asked him a question about, hopefully, I was hoping it was going to get into the Q&A sessions. I, I asked the question, what has been the most difficult thing or challenging thing for the company and the dev team to bring to life in FS22? What has been the most challenging to do? And he said, I can't tell you. So, oh, okay. I thought, that's a bit odd. He said, no, simply because we haven't announced it yet. And he said to me that it's for him, it's one of the one of the things he likes most about the new game. Well, having watched all of all of FarmCon and all the stuff that's been released, I am absolutely blown away by what's going to be in it. It's, it's mind-boggling what's being added. For there to be something that Lars thinks is even better than most of that, I can only imagine. There's some stuff about hiring workers. They're, they're Again, they're not giving out much information yet. So, anyway, loads more to come. Loads more to find out. So yeah, I'm just trying to work out what format to do it in. I will see you momentarily, and let's sell this wood chip. See what we get for the first 250,000. That'll give me a good gauge, because I've got another 250,000, then a bit on top. If it doesn't cover the cost of the field completely, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to get the money from the manure I sold at the biogas plant at midnight, and then whatever I sell when the digestate price comes up. So we'll cover it. Actually, I'll probably go to the bridge. It's a bit of a trek, isn't it? But... It's my own fault. Animals are living the dream. They've had a big old revamp for FS22 as well. And I, th I think across the board, I did wonder whether it was just a revamp for running seasons, because at the moment we've got the standard in-game animals, and then if you run seasons you've got the different breeds. But from what they were talking about, they're implementing that across all of it. Different breeds, different requirements, different feed amounts, all sorts of stuff. There's a whole load coming. Right then, let's sell this first load. See what we get. And then I'll probably see you... I'll have to think about whether I want to sow field 6 with something before it gets too late. You'll probably see a screenshot will come up at midnight of what we get from the biogas plant. And then I'll see you tomorrow morning because I'm hoping field 9, 10, 11 will be ready to go. So we should be on for a big old silage harvest. Just deciding, I haven't decided at this point what silage harvest I'm going to use yet. We've got this trailer, so it'll be brilliant. We'll be able to take way, way more in one go, which is going to make life 
so much easier. 85. So I've got another load will be another 85. 170. 172. Then a little bit more. So we aren't we far off? I'll see you in the morning. It's fairly early, I suppose, for farming. Probably not. Just before 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm down here at the harbour because I'm going to be selling the harvester. We are going to be on the in the market for a new harvester. Not just yet, um, but I'm doing just fine with the one I've got. As far as the wood chips went, first two loads, 250,000 litres each, was 85,600 and change each of those. The third load was 100. 20, no, 130,000 litres and that was 44,500 and change which brought the total to 215,700 and a bit which more than covered the cost of buying field 6 so we bought field 6, we cleared it um, and in clearing it paid for it with a little bit left over on top and as you've already seen the biogas plant paid out for the manure that we sold there uh, and I, because I'm, I'm recording this in two separate stints, so I can't remember what it was, 168? It's literally just popped up on the screen for you guys, isn't it? Uh, I can't, see, can't remember. Uh, shall I repair it first? Of course, I want whoever buys it to have it in good condition. 227,865, that's not a bad selling price. I will take that, thank you very much. Right, so, what are we up to today? for today now yeah today it's a new day of course it's animals are all doing absolutely fantastically pigs are up to 60 they're reproducing absolutely phenomenally they've all been fed they've all been cleaned out uh, everything's going great our gold smelting is working very nicely we've got milk on the go here our milk sheep well it hasn't reset yet Oh, mind you, I think that's onto a new one. We've got a whole load of milk there that's going to need to be sold at some point as well. So, anyway. Silage harvest. That's what we're doing. I am I had a look through at all the different options. I came here to the vehicle imports. And I went through the vehicle imports book. <laughs> the guide to see what was available. What could they import? And uh, I had a look. I was trying to find something I hadn't used before. And I was going to get that John Deere with the IT runner back. You know, the one that's got front wheels and the back section is an IT runner thing. The problem is the IT runner backs weren't very big. And I want to use my, my big um, 250,000 litre trailer. We've got the Jaguar Terra Track, which is part of the class pack. There's this one here, the class Jaguar 900 Type 496. It's got quite a few customise customizable options on it. Um, that one, I'm trying to remember who that one was by. I did write it down. MB3 DNS TV modding. But then there's the Krone Big X 1180 with tracks. So I was trying to think when I did Stone Valley, I think I used a John Deere in the end, or did I use that? I might have used the tracked one. So I may have used this before. A lot of horsepower. Lizard crawl about. Wide crawl about, wider crawl about. Whoa, that's mad. Let's go for the big one. Standard, no, we're going to go for a long pipe. Oh, big extension. Yes, we're going to need that. So we're going to lease that. Um, and then, oh, a header for it would be a great idea, wouldn't it? Now I'm probably going to have to go for. Oh no, we've got the easy collect. Oh, that's nine meter. Yeah, we'll have that. Thank you very much. Nine meters. And then I want to go for, because I'm going to do what I've done before, my kind of method. I know there's all different ways of doing it. There are, there are tons of different ways of doing it. But this is the way I kind of got into the habit and routine of doing. What am I looking for? A dolly. No, that's a weight. A dolly. The flegal dolly, I like because it, generally speaking, will hook up to most forage harvesters is the word. I will call my forage harvester Nigel. Nigel Farage. 
That was terrible. That was, uh, even as far as the dad joke goes, that was pretty poor. Um, anyway, oh, before I forget, um, I want to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to uh, Stephen, Tony, Dave, Jeffrey, James, and Rodrigo. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your generosity and your kindness and your continued support of the channel. Thank you, honestly. Ah, it makes me happy. So, I'm not going to do anything with this. I'm not going to go anything fancy other than capacity, unreal. I'm going to lease that because I want two of these. So what I can do is have one running with this and the dolly. And then when it's full and I swap over, because I'm hoping, because I've done fields 9, 10 and 11, we are going to have... Um, we're going to have plenty, I think. So even with the trailer at 250,000 litres, it's going to be an easier prospect, a quicker prospect, maybe. But I'm still going to have to switch trailers at some point. But at least that way, I can keep the worker going. Now, assuming the worker will continue, and will continue working very nicely with this particular trailer. That's why I've gone for the long pipe as well, because hopefully, we can't, like so, it should make the turns all right. You've got plenty of room there for the turning. I'm going to do the first few. Let's do pipe out just to make sure that's not going to have any problems putting this there, is it? Yes, I hope it's not. Let's open the cover. You know what? That looks like a setup I could work with. I love this tra tracked chrono. Yes, I'm pretty sure I have used this before. Did I start to use the John Deere and then end up using this on Stone Valley? Because I'm sure I mentioned before. That I'd seen one of these at Agri Technica, which was what a couple of years ago now, and it was just oh, it looks phenomenal up close and personal. Yeah, that seems to turn right. There's plenty of plenty of swing room on that. So obviously, it's only, only just starting to get light. But we're going to get up there. We're going to get on with it. Now, yesterday was a weird day. Uh, I say a weird day. I had every intention of streaming yesterday evening. I had one of those unique situations where all of my children were going out for the evening. which just left myself, Mrs. Sinopi and Farm Dog. So I thought, you know what I'm going to do? Because I, I've got on my pad a list of all the things that I've wrote down, all the things that I've kind of gleaned that are coming to FS22. Some things I think I heard, some things I think I know. And it's that weird situation. And probably the excitement of FS22 coming out as well. I, I want to talk to someone about it, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, discuss it and, and see what, what, you know, what other people think and, and the thing is I can do a video and of course I can talk about it, I can go through the list, talk about all sorts of stuff but there's no interaction, you know, so I thought if I stream then I can have that immediate interaction with people watching the stream and I can respond to comments, that kind of thing, that'd be great. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. <laughs> I tried to set it all up, I tried to get it going. Um, now I've got an Elgato, which means rather than stream directly from PlayStation, I was going to use the Elgato and I was going to stream through the PC so the quality would have been better and everything would have been all very lovely and I could set the stream up properly and it would have been you know, a little bit more professional some of, some of my older streams. That's My goal is for it all to be a little bit better each time I do it. Well, because I haven't streamed in such a long time, my OBS needed updating, so I tried to do all of that. Uh, then my, my 4K utility thing needed upgrading so I upgraded everything set it all up and then I couldn't it wouldn't pick up uh, my screen from a PlayStation I went into all the settings I tried everything to get it to work and because it was obviously it had been updated it was all new settings it all reset itself nothing was working properly and I spent ages and ages and ages and ages um, there was a setting on the PlayStation I had to change. Massive thank you to Mr. Dalit JD for, for helping me out with that, because I wasn't sure. Um, so I uh, I asked my lovely daughter to ask him, and um, it just I couldn't get it to work. So after about an hour and a half of messing around with that, and I kind of set myself a target in my head. If I start streaming about 7 p.m., that came and went. Then finally, I accidentally stumbled across a setting, and I thought, right. I've done it. The screen came up, everything was great. I thought, well, I'll get my mic set up, because that obviously needed updating too, so that got updated, did all that. 
sound was working, I was getting the picture that I had on my PS5, it was working on the stream, it was great, everything's good to go. So I thought I'll give it a couple of minutes, I'll just drive around a bit, make sure the sound levels are fine, and then it just went again. The screen just bong, and I couldn't get it back. <laughs> By this time it was about 8pm, and I just thought, I, I, I can't start streaming, and then the screen disappeared like five minutes into the stream. It'll be embarrassing for me, it'll be frustrating for people watching. So unfortunately, we didn't get there. Which is annoying, I know, and I apologise. But, we have got a massive build to do now. So yeah, I, I, there's a whole lot of stuff I want to talk about. There's all sorts of, loads of features and all the new stuff that's going to be coming. And I am genuinely excited. I'm genuinely excited about it. Right then. Shall we do this? It is working. Now, whenever I do a big silage harvest, I've said it before, I'll say it again. What do we think we're going to get? And what's going to, I'll say what's going to make life easier. Um, judging by how much is going into here now, quickly. I think we're going to fill this up pretty fast. How much are we going to get off this field? It's a big old field. I reckon, do you reckon we'll get a million litres off this? Or more? Do you reckon we'll get more off this? I reckon we can get more than that. And the beauty of using a forage harvester, especially when you're putting into a trailer directly behind you, like I am, I don't have to worry about which way around I go around the field, because I haven't got to worry about which side the pipe comes out, so it should be okay. So what it will mean is there won't be a point, I mean I can hire a worker and run alongside it, but if I'm going to be running alongside it anyway, I might as well just do this because I'm still going to be going at six miles an hour so what I will do as I've said I, I just I just favoured this setup personally it's just doing something like this with a larger trailer on a dolly and because the, the flegal dolly hooks up nicely to the forage harvesters I will go around and clear everything and then when I get to a point where that's full I just swap the trailers over and then I can leave the worker to get on with it with the large trailer and I take the other one off and you know I've done it before where I've run alongside and then but then the problem with running alongside a harvester unless you you're doing multiplayer and like when they do it you know watching Tom Pemberton all the other farms when they're doing this for real and when I was in the Lake District and I did a video oh, ages ago now when was it I did the video probably a few years ago when just by chance we drove past the field and they were doing this not with corn they were doing it with grass um, but they were silage harvesting and I, I just went over to the field, asked if I could film, and the guys were great about it. But they had five, they had five guys hauling. So you had five tractors, five trailers. Every time one was full and pulled away, the next one dropped into place. And so the actual forage harvest had never stopped running. Obviously on single player, when you're doing it yourself, if you are running alongside the harvester, as soon as your trailer's full and you drive away, the harvester sits. So it's not doing anything while you're away. Unfortunately, that's just unfortunately that's just the way it is. So that's why I kind of favour doing it this way really. When I get to a point where I can set a worker off, we're over 50,000 litres already. I might have to re reevaluate. Do you reckon we get 2 million litres off this? Hmm. Just thinking, a full circuit around the field, we could fill this trailer. But we'll keep an eye, see how we go. This is another one of those jobs I just I love doing. I love the machinery, I love the, the whole way it works. I, I you know haven't mentioned before that I love the machinery in the game. I really do. Now this is where I might get myself into a sticky situation. Because I don't think when I prepped all this, I left myself enough room on the beach. Can I turn this nicely? Oh, I can. I think we're going to be alright without going in the water. Can we go? And actually, it looks like on the turns as well, because I went for the long pipe on this too. Yeah, we're not going to have enough pro any problems, I don't think, we're leaving a worker. But I am going to have to do a few strips round to make sure that if the worker does do a big sweeping turn, we're not going to end up in the drink. 
that has been the you know, has been and always will be the issue when you're farming fields that are close to uh, water. Oh, in, you know, we know what the AI workers are like. That was one of the things I wanted to talk about, was the AI worker thing. I have a theory. I have a theory. We'll see if I'm right or not. Um, during the Q&A session with Ken Burgess and Lars, uh, Lysa Tan, a question was asked regarding AI and that on one of the screens when they were doing the, the gameplay, showing you the gameplay, there was, was it Activate AI Menu or something? And they wouldn't talk about it. They said oh, that was a feature that, that's going to be coming, they won't talk about it. But then a separate question was asked regarding contracts. And somebody had asked the question, will we be able to do multiple contracts uh, on FS22? And they said, well, Ken said, yes. And then said, the thing is, the mission system isn't complete yet. It's still a work in progress. Now, I, I had to separately ask Lars a question. I think I mentioned it earlier about what was the most difficult thing to bring to the game, to bring to life. And he'd said, Lars had said to me it was something they haven't told people about yet, but something he was really excited about. Something that for him was going to be something that all the things that we, I've listed already, all the things we kind of know if you watched FarmCon already. What is there left? And the only thing I could think of was it's the AI system and missions, contracts. So my theory is this. <laughs> could be wrong. Now it says about AI menu. I'm wondering whether or not you're now going to have like a, a pool of workers. So you can hire like farmhands. Whether it's long term or how it works, I don't know how that's going to be. So there could well be a menu, like a pool of workers locally that you can hire but you will then be able to run multiple contracts at a time with that pool of workers. Now, I am wondering as well whether the push forward effect on that is, is it going to be a system whereby the workers get paid a certain amount, but as they improve, they get paid more or, you know, I mean, maybe I'm speculating a little bit further on with that, but I think it's got to be something to do with the worker system and contracts. I really hope if, if on FS22, I know on... Um, it's one of those things that Lars mentioned about, someone had asked a question about GPS and said, will we be getting GPS? Um, and Lars said it's not something they've ever provided on, on Farming Simulator and they, they're not planning to on FS22. The thing you've got to remember is, GPS isn't provided for PC either. The GPS that, that they have on PC is a mod. It, you know, it's modded by the modding community. It's not something Giants provide. Giants have never put GPS into the game. So, there's a, there's a lot of things that, even like to be able to have multiple contracts on the go, that's a modern PC. That, that, again, that's not provided by giants. That's not something they've done before. So, yeah, that's where, I, that's where I think we might be going with it. That could be the next big reveal, I think. Could be the mission contract system and workers. Now, is it going to be workers are going to be any better? Are they going to still hit things and fall off ledges and get stuck and that kind of thing. Potentially, but well, I am very curious to see where we're going to end up, you know. But that's actually something I, would, I thought I'd mention. If it turns out to be true, great. I did also mention the video I put up yesterday, all the new information we found out about Cops. If you haven't watched it, it's in the FS22 information sharing playlist. And it says about a Mediterranean uh, map, which hadn't really been kind of mentioned before. I'm, and I say, I, I'm thinking Italy. I, I reckon the Italian map. I haven't really gone down that route before. Um, it did say it's a map with a Mediterranean climate. But anyway, so I, I'm, I'm hedging my bets and saying Italy, I reckon. Now, all of this is based completely on speculation. This is completely on me, my head. I don't know for definite. No one has told me anything. This is not me with an inside track. This is not me knowing stuff that other people don't know. I really honestly have no idea. This is just me speculating. Based on information gleaned, <laughs> that may be. Now, I know I'm, I'm going over the edge a little bit here. Often you'll find you'll get the corn. As you can see, I think it's just the way the header animation works. If I go too far, it will stop. But if there is extra out there, I'll grab what I can. 
We're not going to quite hit 250,000 litres for a full turn round, but that's still, we're not going to be far off, are we? That's madness. I'm thinking, oh yeah, we'll get probably you know, a third of the field done with 250,000 litres. How wrong was I? Whoa, mama. Okay, well, I think I've waffled on enough for the time being. What we will do is, I will see you at 250,000 litres. I'm going to go and grab the lorry as well so we can swap over trailers. And then, the problem is, I don't think I'm going to be at a point where I can set a worker off. I don't really want to leave this not running. But I may not have a choice because I don't think I'm going to be ready. Unless I just let it go up and down here, maybe. Right, I think what I'll do when we get to the end here, I might run a couple of strips across the top, backwards and forwards, so I've got a bit of turning room. And then when I swap trailers, I can leave it going up and down here, that way and that way. That way I'm nowhere near the water, so I can then take full trailer load down. Now one thing is compacting. I had a bit of a crazy idea. It's a little bit Eureka Farms. <laughs> Something I'd mentioned a while ago. I don't know if I'm going to do it in all honesty but you know that um, tracked pickup conveyor belt that uh, Mantridge released and it came with that tracky, that, that massive drivable track and I said I wonder how that would be for compacting a silage clamp. You know it's huge. Would it be a quick way of compacting the silage clamp? Well, I wasn't sure. Don't click the side, don't click the side. I'm not sure yeah, and I, in my head I was thinking, that would be amazing. I wonder if that would work, you know. So I did think about maybe I might do it off camera actually. <laughs> Grab the trackie and um, see if it works. But if it does work, new compacting tool. I <laughs> know, oh, I've got a bit of DJ, haven't I? I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, today, touch wood, on my desk, um, I'm feeling better than I have done in about two weeks, I think. Almost kind of delirious, can you tell? I feel a little bit, a bit spaced out. I only had one coffee this morning. I know, then in the last week I haven't drunk coffee at all. I've just been drinking water, because it's been hot as well. And I haven't been feeling so great. I've just been trying to stay hydrated and whatever. I haven't drunk any coffee. Probably wired, been a little bit wired. I hit the 250,000 litres. So, what I will do is pop that there. Take that in just a second. Let's get a worker going on this. There we go. Right, straight line down. I think it's the best way to go. Let's see, fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed this works. Don't see why it wouldn't. Let's hop out. Let the worker crack on. Let's take that and unload. Now, unlike before, this, because of the BJ, I haven't really... I think the most I did was 500,000 litres, just over 500,000 litres, and that was off of Field 7. And I kind of spread it all out, but I think because we're going to get in excess of a million, I think should get in excess of a million. I might just pile it all at the back, I'm th I don't know. It's a big silo, that's the thing. Righty. Yeah, that is a big silo, isn't it? Or clank. Get right to the back. Uh, 
But yes, you wouldn't be able to do this in real life with your lorry like that. It'd be very bad for it. I think that's the top. Yeah, so in a minute. Don't see any stuff any higher than that. We seem to have a flat top on there. Go right to the back. Yep. Wow. Uh, yeah, so what I might do is just do a whole strip down this side. And then if I then move across, I think rather than. So I'm starting closer to the cell point, so that if I don't fill it all the way up across... Oh, is it? <laughs> it's just an idea. What will happen now is, I will probably see you for the next load. Let's just see what we end up with. It's going to be a bit of time for me now, but for you guys, it should be a little bit quicker. That's all regrown again, all very nice. I don't know what I'm going to do with that next. I think we've got enough bales. I suppose we could just add to what we're doing, but it seems a bit excessive. Think it's almost full for the second time. Actually, I don't know if we're going to get. Is it weird that strip all the way around the outside and a little bit across the top got 250,000 litres? And it's taken all of this to get to the next 250. Now I'm panicking. Maybe I'm not going to get to a million. No, I wasn't. I'm sure of it. I'm sure it'll all be fine. <laughs> no. Don't keep going. There we go. Ooh, there they go. The harvest crossover. I'm just going back straight for a little bit. We're all right. No, the one, that one. There we go. The old harvest crossover. Hop in. <laughs> of course, I stopped the engine. <gasps> and unload.
And that, as they say, is that. The whole field is complete. We've got the last 66,325 litres. I have been, let's check here, I have been ploughing and fertilising as I go. So we've got the last bit there to plough, but I need to do a little bit more on the edge again, just to, to avoid any problems with turning. But a lot of the field is done, as you can see behind me, and all the equipment is over there. I haven't, I've lost track, I think I'm on, we went, we definitely went over a million. I think one, 1.25 or with 1.5, I'm, I'm, I lost track. So it's going to be, it's either going to be 1.25 and then this, or 1.5 million and this. The other thing I forgot to mention earlier on as well, when I started out, field six that I was doing all the prep work on, I said I needed to seed it. I did that last night and I put cotton in it. I don't know why. I haven't done cotton for a little while. I was going through the crop types and I thought, well, I could do some more sunflower. Right? And I thought, I didn't want to do sugar cane necessarily. So I thought, yeah, cotton, why not? And then we can get a cotton harvester and we'll do a cotton harvest on. Definitely, I'm just <laughs> I'm second guessing myself. Yeah, cotton. And all of those are ready to harvest now. So we can also then move on to do the canola versus pig food thing I was going to look at we'll harvest everything and sell all the canola and the money we make from selling the canola we will buy pig food and see how long it lasts that's not good <laughs> actually you know what I didn't do uh... Oh, that's interesting. In that, uh, oh, I don't know, lower harvester header. It's only when you hire a worker that the actual, the cab raises up. Because there isn't actually an option to do it yourself, is there? Close covers on the trailer. Pipe out, turn on harvester, unfold header. No. Oh, it's worth a look. This one, I mentioned the other one. This one is by Kyosho. All the mods that I'm using over and above standard in game stuff, the details are in the description. If there's something you're wondering what I'm using, where I got it from, who made it, that's where it will be. And then we'll just click that. Get that out of the way. Oh, it's looking good. I'm very happy. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn that off for the moment, because I don't want to know just yet, just yet what we've ended up with. I want it to be a big surprise. <laughs> well, I've already said it. It's, it's got to be one of two. Uh, sure, I pressed X. I'm going to put this just to the side. I always avoid going right to the front edge, only because when you start to compact, sometimes it spills out the front, and I want to avoid that if possible. I am also... I'm really tempted with that. What I said about getting the tracky. I know a lot of people won't be... You know, it becomes a bit farcical, and I know that. It's more of a just a, a curiosity thing, I think. For my own curiosity, I wonder. Right then, what was your guess? What was your prediction? What did you think we were going to end up with? Let's turn that on and let's have a look. Oh, so it was 1.5, yeah. 1,566,333 litres, which is just the minor thing of now compacting it. There are loads of different compaction methods and potentially, I would probably say at this point, we could cut it short and have a shorter episode. <laughs> and if you want to stop here, if you don't want to see the tracky thing, and I totally understand that, if that's something that may annoy you, then thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. But I think I'm going to get one. I'm going to bring it out 
and just give it a go. This last bit's just for fun. This is just to see if it will compact and if it compacts really quickly, all the better. If it doesn't work at all, I've learnt something. So, I can't believe I'm even doing this. So here we are. This is the tracky. If you didn't see it, if you don't watch my mod reviews, this was an additional, please don't get stuck. That can't be where we end up getting stuck. Really? Come on. There we go. Um, as part of a Mantrid mod. And the interesting thing is, it's only 42 or 46 to buy. To lease was two. This cost me two euros to lease. So at the end of the day, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, does it? This could be, this could, for all we know, be the best silage clamp compactor that there ever was. I just suddenly panicked then and thought, is that going to go under the lights? Honestly, when I said they're on about being delirious, what am I doing? As usual, quality content from Mr. Silly P. Like I said, whoa, 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 what happened there? What did that hit that I didn't like? There must have been a collision there for something. I'm worried now about putting this up on the clamp. Maybe I should save the game first in case something tragical happens. Because <laughs> we just don't know at this point. I mean, it could just be the complete opposite, in that because it's, it doesn't like anything with any kind of, anything that's raised at all. Just slowly, let's creep a little bit, let's just really slowly, nice and gently does it. Yeah, because it's so wide in its tracks, it might be that it spreads the load to avoid compaction, so it could be the complete reverse. Uh, bear with me a second, I'm just going to save the game. Game saved. <laughs> oh dear. Will it even go up onto the stack? That's the thing. Whoa, it like that. It doesn't even look like it's got any kind of weight to it, does it? It's not doing anything. Oh, I thought this was going to be awesome. Like, you drive forward and it would just go, boom, you know, boom, done. But I get the feeling whatever's in here... No, it's not compacting at all, is it? Oh, that's a big disappointment. I was so hoping that was going to work. No, hasn't changed at all. Oh well. You live and learn, don't you? So I will be compacting with something else. <laughs> and once that's all compacted and fermented, that will be going to be sold. It will all be going in here. Again, hence the reason I did it all over to this side rather than spread right the way across the back or if I'd done it for some reason in that corner. It means with conveyor belts and stuff, if I want to sell it, I haven't got to move it as far to there. But I might do what I did before and just have the conveyor belt that puts it up into the trailer because at 250,000 litres, it's probably quicker and easier to do it that way around. So I've got a load of machinery to move now. I need to finish off prepping field 9, 10, 11. So plough it, fertilise it, and then decide what crop to put back into that then. So we've done the silage harvest. That's probably one of the, the smoothest and more straightforward silage harvests I've done, simply because of the capacity of the trailers. I mean, you know, I, I've done it before on all different maps with all different sized trailers. When I did it on Stone Valley, I did all those fields, and I think I ended up with 15 million litres or something I ended up with across various different silage clamps. And we were using the 
BSM 70,006, weren't we? I think. And we had a couple of those joined together. So it was still, you know, you were doing a lot of trips backwards and forwards. So that just obviously reduces the amount of trips. The actual harvesting side of things is no different. But... So there we go. I apologise for that. I don't know what made me, you know, that's very unlike me to do something a bit weird and bonkers like that. But it was something I did say I was going to try just in case, and at least I now know it doesn't. It only cost me two to lease it, so it's not like I'm out of pocket by a huge amount. But what I have also got to do now is check on my pricing, because the price of Digestate at the slurry yard is now back over a 1000 1039 I had 90,000 odd litres to sell. There's 26,793 in the silo at the moment because I've loaded up the tanker with 64,000 litres. That will need to go to the slurry yard, but I'm going to keep an eye on that because it's still in the green and it's still climbing. So I'll wait till it hits its maximum. Then I'll sell all the digestate I've got so the money will go up a bit again. And we're in the market for another tractor, a new tractor. I think, I think I'm definitely going to get rid of the foremost. I'm going to have four largest tractors. New harvester. Can you guess what it's going to be? Uh, and then, yeah, build 9, 10, 11. I'm just thinking out loud. The harvest on 1 to 5. The pig food situation. Yeah. Excellent. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always, thanks for watching.